So I'm an executive director of enterprise architecture and the project management office. So the way I like to um, tell that story is if we're talking about any new things that the company is going to invest in technology in, a new software build or enhancing a capability we already have um, or some operations that are critical to su sustain success, um, I drive the project managers and lead that team to make sure that we spread people across to be able to manage the delivery of that work. Um, additionally, in the enterprise architecture space, that is a collection of solutions architects, of platform architects, uh, innovation and solution managers, as well as a couple Pellissippi interns, happenstance, um, where we are evaluating projects, exploring technology, um, making recommendations on best principles and practices in terms of scalability, uh, security, um, integration capability, and of course, user experience. So overseeing those teams as part of my day to day uh, for a lot of the complex projects where I inject more individually is kind of a principal architect to look at a collection of projects. So let's say there's going to be eight projects for the year that's going to have 50 systems touched. Well, someone has to articulate a roadmap to say we have to sequentially put these things in order in a logical sense so that we're not putting, you know, overriding changes or causing a conflict along the way. So a lot of what I do is arrange the lower level solutioning that happens across these systems. And I bring that together and tell that story to our executive leadership to say, here's why you need to stage this at this time of the year. Here's the downstream benefits and ramifications of if you make this decision and help try to guide that where some folks may not be in the nitty gritty technical weeds, if you will. I think one of the first opportunities I ever had to interact with technology, I would have been in about seventh grade. And one of the courses that I took was technology. And at that time, they had just brought in some of the first Apple II machines, which kind of dates my age a little bit. But I remember being excited about a challenge of programming like a robot arm to move from this position to that position. And at least at that time, that was the one of the first moments when I was performing a task or activity that something clicked in terms of my uh, joy of doing it was met with the actual requirement of doing it. So it's like one of the first things I ever identified with that made me happy to do that. Um, when I went into college, uh, I thought I would go into accounting. That was my initial decision because I felt like I, I was inclined with numbers and accounting. And the more I got into that, the more that I didn't connect with the joy of it. And so for me, I went back to the thing I remembered, you know, from my youth that I felt good with technology, able to get into tech. And uh, after I made that decision, I never looked back. So if I'm looking holistically at what I feel like are skill sets for success, um, obviously having the technical background and capability provided uh, through a university gives you some of the core background and skills needed around understanding, you know, like concepts of object oriented programming, uh, variable variable based programming, incorporating math and logic into how you program or script. Um, a lot of the front end and back end design concepts to get people prepared for which parts of the interface that they would work with. So I think having that background and programming knowledge and skills is critical. Um, any networking and database capabilities, depending on what field of interest that you're in, uh, anything that you can do to at least gain a base level understanding of it. You may not work in network every day, but having a grasp on how networks flow traffic and how systems communicate together helps you to have the knowledge you need to be able to get started right out of the gate building new systems. In terms of things outside of just university education, I can tell you uh, 12 plus years into my career, that everything that I learned when I came out of school, um, the concepts at a high level have stayed with me over time in terms of interpreting how to program, how to write functional requirements, how to solution the architecture. But there's going to always be this need for upskilling towards the platforms of the day, right? So in the day we're in now, um, having good knowledge of public cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Azure um, is critical. Uh, having knowledge about how integrations flow between systems, you know, with leveraging either an integrations platform or serverless functions to be able to move and shift data. Um, understanding the, the notion about queuing is really important in terms of API delivery. Um, lastly, I'd close with if you're going to have a application facing background, 
Uh, it's important to also understand the data components and how your data and information is going to flow into, for example, an analytics platform so that businesses can report on it. So some foundational concepts about understanding data warehousing, you know, modern data lake, data warehouse, um, data platforms is also important. So AWS certifications don't hurt, for example, getting some foundational upskilling in a, in a platform like a Cloud Guru or Pluralsight or tools that are available like that always allow you to continue to upskill and refine uh, what you're doing after your, your university education is over. I would just say that in terms of measuring velocity of technology change, you know, at least 10 plus years ago, the evolution speed of most major platform shifts was around like three years. So you'd hear about something dropping and it would take a couple of years for another major release to happen. In today's uh, delivery methodologies of things like Agile, uh, things move a lot faster in terms of product features and releases. And a lot of times we've even automated, for example, on mobile devices, as soon as we iterate change, it's already on your mobile device, you're using the app and you don't even know that you're touching features that have been deployed. So I would say we went from this model of, you know, more legacy, longer term releases to being more iterative. So the upskilling towards new features and technology really is paramount in what you do every day. Training has to become a part of what you do in order to continue to sustain your career in IT. Everybody that is going to um, continue their education past high school to take some form of a technology class to not only understand it from a, this is what I may want to do for a living standpoint, but also just to get a general feel for some of what is being formed in, current, in terms of current platforms today. That way, when you get to a point um, a couple of years down the road where you're nearing the end of your tenure, uh, you don't feel as lost in some of the technology that helps us to like edit and collaborate and be able to know how like web pages come together. Um, I know I've spoken with a couple uh, marketers that have came that we support in our business. And a lot of them have taken just technology courses to do, for example, base HTML that becomes a part of how they do design for uh, campaigns and advertising to people. So it's not a waste in my opinion for anybody to invest in a technical course because it helps you either broaden your understanding to how you want to do that all the time, or at least gives you a greater respect for those that do it all the time. So I look for foundational programming and scripting skills. We'll start with the practical. Um, I, I typically try to measure and understand a person's ability to know the full stack. So do they just understand application development or do they have a notion of database design? Do they understand network flow? That helps me to kind of ascertain and recommend what space or area that they would be in. For example, some folks may thrive on the front end design where they're more about the design of the button instead of what the button does when you click it. So trying to help, you know, understand people's capabilities or skill sets, because some programmers are very UI centric. They get it. They know how to lay out the design. Other folks have a strength in just the functional development of it, not so much how it looks. So finding the right people to pair together uh, in that sense is uh, important. Um, I also am a big a proponent of emotional intelligence and having a good understanding of your ability to communicate. So just in an example, every intern that is under my tenure that, you know, regardless of what uh, university they're coming from, we always make sure that they get a fair dose of scripting and development work, but they also get a fair share of being able to demonstrate that work and facilitate for feedback and to be in an environment where they may receive constructive criticism on the work that's being performed. I think uh, soft communication skills, in my opinion, are just as critical as having the technical knowledge to execute. Because if you can't articulate why something is important to do it a certain way and stand your ground without it being immensely difficult to do that, um, it makes it difficult to be successful and scale your career over time. So having the knowledge and the ability to communicate that and the wall also understand your business partner you're working with uh, helps you to iterate change successfully and not continue to miss the mark on feedback that you're getting. So I try to look at all of those things to try to measure and understand. It's not to say someone that just likes to program, just keep their head down and just do work without a lot of interaction still doesn't have a job. 
but for me as a, a manager, I try to, you know, determine where they'd be a good fit in terms of would they interface with people or would they just interface with that team. Um, everything we do uh, every single day is hinged on the foundational decisions around security. So if folks are getting into education and wonder if it's important to take a class or two related to that, I think it is. Um, understanding the importance of encryption helps you to know that data transport uh, is paramount in your ability to develop uh, systems or solutions as well as once you have that data, how you're protecting access, whether direct or indirect. Um, controlling the user experience and having a fine balance between making your controls work for users or making your users work for the controls is also a delicate balance. So um, if you get an extra factor, for example, on your banking app or something that you feel like annoys you in the process, there's a team, chances are, that developed that, that had a conversation about where the balance is between control and convenience. So that, that conversation in terms of anything users touch is something we do every single day. So getting comfortable with understanding why those controls are in place and the um, pieces that help form the principles around that, any training you can do there, I think is critical. People and the um, process of change. I'll put it like that. So I love the partnering part about it and working with people to understand what challenges that they're facing and help them to work towards a solution to put things together. A lot of times uh, what you're starting with in the beginning is going to be a notion or an idea. So someone may raise their hand and say, hey, this process is uh, deficient. Um, we want to be able to improve this. If we can get it from paper to being digital, we may be able to save X amount of hours and X amount of dollars. Well, then light bulbs start coming on on my side of it. And I'm thinking, yeah, we can deliver something around that. That whole dialogue and conversation is something I love to do every single day. Um, the, the process part about it, I feel like can be a challenge for folks, but over time, as you get acclimated to an entry level position, you'll find that every company runs their ability to deliver differently. So making sure that you're flexible enough to adjust to your company's approach and how they deliver technology is important. Every place you go will be a little bit different so just trusting in what the textbooks tell you in terms of a deployment strategy may not always translate everywhere. So having an open mind when you do that will reduce the uh, ability to be frustrated as often. The other part that I would say, you know, that is a challenge is, and it's not something I don't necessarily dislike, but I think it's important for folks to understand um, technology is always going to be evolving every single day. So having the ability to respond with th when things come up or something breaks and developing an ability to fail forward and fail fast is important. Um, not striving to always just have perfection. And when you're developing technology is important because everything's always going to be changing. So I would think that's probably the piece that some folks may be challenged with and should think through in terms of their openness to, you know, ask questions or their openness to admit that they don't have the full answer on what they're developing. Because if you don't, that can hinder or hamper your confidence in what you're doing at IT. So I think it's important to keep an open mind in terms of working through challenges and not being afraid to fail and still being confident in what you're delivering, even if you don't have all the answers. Um, member of our culture focus group and diversity and inclusion group, I have a few layers of that answer. So I hope you all humor me for a couple minutes on this. Um, one of the areas in IT that I have spent a lot of time focusing on is the emergence of women in technology. So I, I'm a proponent of continuing to foster leadership and opportunity to help broaden and uh, more equalize in the IT space a setting where you're giving equal pay, equal voice to the conversation and equal opportunity. And I feel like other organizations need to continue to embrace that and welcome that as it, it brings a broader and more diverse perspective. Um, from a more inclusion standpoint, you know, not, no longer looking at a gender or ethnicity to make a determination about someone's capability is important as employers. We, we begin to make the decisions not just on, you know, experience alone, but we also learn about a person's story. And their story helps contribute to what drives their passion. So understanding all of those things is paramount. And, you know, I take great pride in being an inclusive leader. 
because it's all about what people can contribute in their positive contributions and helping them to develop their strengths and nothing else matters. It really matters about how they can make a difference to the organization and you embrace the parts of them that are different from you. And, you know, I would also add at the end of this that the other part I think about when it's diversity and inclusion is also thought leadership. So, you know, you've heard the expression, if you hire everybody that's just like you, the room's going to be quiet. So not being afraid to hire people that may challenge your thinking or not being afraid to be a part of an organization where people may not agree with you all the time. That brings a dialogue forward where you can have healthy conflict and work towards a more realistic solution that gives a lot more thought leadership and ideas to a problem. I find that when everybody just agrees on the first thing that comes out of a tech meeting and we don't challenge the notion of that idea, nine times out of 10, you're going to change whatever you said because you didn't think about a different perspective. So the more inclusive you can not only be in the people you bring to the room or their background that they bring with them, but as well as their thought leadership and being inclusive of their ideas, all of those things only add to your ability to make a more informed decision. I definitely do feel like from the programming and scripting skill set perspective that uh, students are being set up for success to be able to inject themselves into projects and make an immediate impact. I think in working with these students and having them be applied in some real world experience, I think my advice is continue to find creative ways to show them more public cloud facing technologies that they can interact with prior to getting into the workforce to have to do that. So they have some of the concepts and vernacular of the different cloud providers. I think that's probably been the biggest area where we provided some upskilling, um, but they jumped right in and was able to adjust quickly.